What's up YouTube? Today we're going to do another vlog style video. I haven't vlogged during the day. Those past vlogs have been over at night shifts during my second and third year. So I figured I might as well show you guys what a daily routine is like for me. So let's get to it. And good morning. It's about 5.30 a.m. and we are doing our morning workout. And the best part about waking up early is that when we go work out, sometimes Indiana will make some scrambled eggs for me because she goes into work 30 minutes after me. Mm. All right, so I just got to work. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but it is a beautiful day out, which is great because I don't think I've said this yet, but it's Monday and it was raining all weekend, which was miserable. And I am on the cardiothoracic rotation, which basically we just read chest x-rays and chest CTs all day. And it's pretty cool because my attending lets us out pretty early because all of us have to study for boards. Well, the seniors do. So I usually take this way, when it's really nice outside, I take this long way in through the uh, loading dock. And it's pretty disgusting because it's like all medical waste and stuff. But I don't care. Mm, bio waste. Good morning, Leah. Hey, Julian. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. It's a little dark in here today. Yeah. You... All right, so I just finished reading the first couple of studies, and right when I got here this morning, I had a positive pulmonary embolism scan, or a CTA chest, with contrast, and it was positive for PE. And if you don't know what a PE is, or a pulmonary embolism, I'll show you. Before I get into the CTA chest portion to see a pulmonary embolism, I wanna show you exactly where they come from. So I'm gonna start by showing you the CT venogram, which is a, it's essentially in a CT abdomen pelvis with the extension a little lower to the knees. And you get a picture of the entire course of the veins all the way through IVC, uh, iliac veins, femoral veins, and to the popliteal veins. You get a little bit of the popliteal veins. So we have aorta here and we have IVC here. So we're gonna follow the IVC down, breaks off into the common iliac vein breaks off into the internal and external iliac vein and down into the left femoral. And that's about it. So if you look at the left common femoral vein, there's a little black dot in it or a filling defect in it. But if you compare it to the right side, you notice the right side is nice and clean. So this is actually what a non-occlusive thrombus looks like or a DVT looks like in the vein. So you can see a nice filling defect within this left common femoral vein, and it extends all the way up into the external iliac vein here as well. So what happens in a pulmonary embolism is this actually breaks off, or portions of it, this clot break off, and they travel up north. So imagine a piece of this breaks off and it goes up. It'll go all the way into the IVC. And keep going up here, past the renal veins, past the liver, and up into the heart, go into the right atrium, right ventricle, and ultimately out the right ventricular outflow tract, which isn't imaged here. So I'll show you what that looks like on a CTA chest. Before I go there, let me show you what it looks like on the coronal view. So I know it's hard to see here, so let me see if I can zoom in here. So this is actually the entire clot going all the way up the left common femoral vein. I wish I could get it in better plane here, but that's all I got and it extends up into the external iliac vein. So again, as you can see, this is the heart, and this is the IVC, which connects the heart to the every other vein in the body, essentially. So once you get on this main highway, if a little clot breaks off from the leg, goes up this IVC and into the heart, now you can see how it can go to the lungs. 
So this is a CTA chest. This is your IVC right here. I know it's not opacified. That's because I've windowed it a little bit. And because in a CTA chest, the pulmonary arteries and aorta are basically the only things that are opacified. The timing is different with the contrast bolus. So I'm gonna scroll up here. So you can see this IVC kind of sneaks in here. So this is the heart. We have the right atrium, right ventricle. I'm going up, up, up. Now we're in the right ventricular outflow tract or the pulmonary artery. So this is where the pulmonary artery breaks off. This is the main trunk right here. And it breaks off into the left and right main pulmonary arteries. And as you can see, this filling defect right here is not supposed to be there. Neither is this one. So all of this dark signal in this uh, in the pulmonary artery here, this is all thrombus. So as you can see, this thrombus, this is what we call a saddle pulmonary embolus or saddle pulmonary embolism. And it kind of drapes over the heart like this or the main pulmonary artery like this and can block off blood flow completely to the lungs as well. This is a large thrombus burden here. So essentially no blood flow is getting to these lungs. So you can imagine what happens to the lungs when you get no blood flow to them. They don't like it. It's like a stroke to the lungs, essentially. So they can infarct, they can, the patient can actually die from a large thrombus like this, which is why imaging these DVTs are so crucial and you need to catch them early to prevent this kind of thing. So let me show you what it looks like on the coronal. So again, this is the heart right here. This is the aorta and left ventricular outflow tract. I'm gonna follow up the, this is from the right ventricle, coming up the right ventricular outflow tract, coming to the right pulmonary artery, left pulmonary artery branching. And as you can see, this large thrombus here, again, it looks very similar to what we saw in the leg, the lower extremity, but now it has traveled all the way up into the heart and ultimately blocking off blood flow to the lung. This clot extends all the way down on both sides into the segmental and subsegmental branches of, of the pulmonary arteries which can be pretty devastating to the lungs. Okay, so that concludes this session on pulmonary embolism and DVTs as it pertains to CT imaging. I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions about these studies, leave a comment below and I'll try to answer it. Otherwise, let's get back to the video. So I hope you enjoyed that video on pulmonary emboli and how to find them on chest CT or what they look like for that matter. It's time for me to get back to reading some studies. Also, I lifted arms this morning and holding up this phone with my arm is like making me shake all over the place. Workout problems. So it is now 11.45 and I'm going to get something to eat. Um, I've pretty much just been reading studies, answering phone calls, like this one. Chess, Michael. Good, sorry for the wait, my computer shut down on me. So yeah, they are calling this little P in the lower lung here, yeah. I, I agree, it, it is real. I mean, it's subsegmental, so it's one of the distal branches, but it's still real. That's good enough for you? All right then. Thanks, bye. Now I'm going to get something to eat and go to our noon conference, which we have every day. I'll show you what that's like too. Also, even though I work out this morning, I'm still gonna take the stairs. Cause yes, they fit. Only take the elevator if you're injured or can't walk. So I usually go with a grilled chicken sandwich. But what I do is I take off the bun and just eat the grilled chicken. We're just going pure protein today. And now we're going to conference. Let's go. Why you are seeing our Boston artifacts from this uh, <laughs> direction? Because of patient motion, you see this uh, artifacts on the, uh, again, this direction. All right, so it is now about 1.30. I checked in with my attending and he doesn't need me the rest of the day, so he's going to give me the rest of the day off to study, which is not normal, but Right now we're studying for boards and we gotta take off. Pretty much any time off we can get, we take. So we are grateful for that. And yeah, time to go home and study the rest of the day.
which I'd probably rather be working, to be honest with you. And just so you guys know, this is not a common thing to get out this early. Usually we get out around five-ish or six-ish, but like you guys know, now I'm on my chest rotation and it's really not that busy. It's busy in the morning right now. Some days are busier than others, depending on what clinic there is, if there's the chest clinic where they just do a whole bunch of follow-up malignancy, chest cancer scans, then yeah, it can be pretty busy. But today wasn't that bad. So read like, I don't know, 10 or 15 CTs this morning, caught up the list. My attending helped me out along the way. So by the time I went to conference, the list was all caught up and I came back and he was basically reading the whole time I was in conference and he said I can get out of here and go study. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And before anybody asks, yes, I am an interventional radiology resident, but like I said before, you have to do three years of diagnostic radiology before you can do full-time IR work. And I completely agree with that because you can't be a good interventional radiologist without having a good diagnostic background. If you don't know imaging, you can't perform image-guided procedures. That's pretty much it. So, yes, you have to do an internship and three years of diagnostic radiology before you do full-time interventional radiology. So I am a PGY-4, or third-year radiology resident. I will do, starting in July, which is will be my PGY-5 year, I will be doing almost like 75% IR, and then a few diagnostic rotations of MAMO and nuclear medicine. But for the most part, I'll be doing all IR. Then my senior year after that, which is what I'm interviewing fellowship-wise, or my PGY-6 year, I will be doing mostly IR. And by mostly, I mean like 99%. What better way to start my study afternoon than a nice cup of iced coffee? Literally can't survive without it. Now it's time to be productive for a good four hour session of studying, which is what I do every single day for like multiple months now. It's pretty sweet, right? All right, I take that back. I'm going to do a little quick grocery shopping because as you can see, I don't drink any creamer in my coffee, but Andriana does. And being the good husband, I will go get her some creamer because we're out. And maybe pick up a few more supplies while we're at it. So off to the store and then study. But now we're going to study. All right, so I just got home, sat down, opened my book, and I will be sitting here for the next few hours. But it's really tough because it is like so sunny outside and it's like 75 degrees, super sunny, no cloud in the sky, and the pool is right down there. And all I wanna do is go lay out, but I have a job to do, and that's part of the sacrifice of being in medicine. Sometimes you have to study when you don't want to. Sometimes you have to go into work when you don't want to. But it's the way it goes. So I'll be studying for the next few hours. I'll probably just study up until the wifey gets home around like 8 p.m. or so and uh, hang out with her the rest of the night. But this is where I'll be and that's about it. All right guys, so that concludes my Monday. Hope you guys enjoyed this daytime vlog. I'll probably do many more of these in the future, especially when I start doing full-time interventional radiology. I think you guys will really enjoy that. As always, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. If I like it, I'll respond to it. If I don't, I won't. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram. And otherwise, I will see you guys on the next video.